Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and I've got another $1.88 foundation from shopmissa.com. This is the AOA Studio Air Cream Foundation. It's another new one from them. It retails for $1.88. Only comes in seven different shades but it does go all the way from light to deep. Now I end up getting the third lightest shade, medium one, which I know is going to be too dark for me but the light two was very yellow and the light one in the product swatches also looked quite yellow and I'd rather have something be a little bit too dark but a decent undertone than be the wrong undertone for me. It just seems to work better that way. This is described as a hydrating foundation balm with a lightweight, long wearing formula with matte buildable coverage for a filtered natural look. Hydrating, creamy, seamless, blurring, mature skin friendly, here's that claim again. Buildable and blendable, non-toxic, vegan, cruelty-free. It's 0.21 ounces or 6 grams of product. As I look through the ingredients here, it just looks like a silicone-based type of balm. Pretty minimal number of ingredients in it. I don't see added fragrance on the list. It's currently getting 4.5 out of 5 stars. Only 4 reviews because it's brand new. But uh, let's take a look at shade M1, swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time! First up is today's foundation from AOA Studio, the Air Cream Foundation in shade M1. Second I've got from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is MAC Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last, I've got from Wet n Wild, the Tinted Hydrator in Fair. I already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 49-year-old face. I will go in on one side with a damp sponge. Other side, I will use my BK Beauty 101 brush. And I did prime with my handmade Bacuchiol cream. And usually balms, I tend to either go fingertip application. I usually tend to go fingertips because... Usually the warmth of the skin helps to sort of melt them down. I can't figure out how to open this. <laughs> One moment, please. There was a tiny piece of tape that I was missing. Here is what we are working with. You know, I think I will use the sponge on one side and I might just do fingertips on the other side. So I'm gonna go straight into this. Well, this might be tough with the sponge. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go fingertips because, you know, the the warmth of your body helps to get the balm going. This isn't super dark for a medium. I am gonna take it up under my eyes as well. We'll use it as concealer. It does seem to have a good bit of coverage the question will be, how bad is it going to cling to my dry skin? And will it be able to shear out a little bit? Or is it going to just be very cakey? This one's a little bit yellow in its undertone as well. So if you're on the cool side, you might have trouble finding a match here. It's a pretty, pretty heavy consistency, which for coverage could be a good thing, but... It also, if we don't get it to blend in, it's gonna look pretty heavy. Let's hope we can get this to blend. It is definitely in need of the help of the warmth of my body, which I'm always freezing cold, so uh, I don't have all that much warmth to share <laughs> with my foundation. <laughs> it is a good amount of coverage though. I'm going in full, full speed ahead here because it's kind of tough. This balm is not soft. It's, it's, you definitely need the melting warmth to get it going. It's not a, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty solid, solidly packed balm. Come on, melt down, buddy. Melt down, buddy. Come on, you can do it. I'm really just trying to give it like as much body heat as I can. I mean, it's about 72 degrees in this room, so it's not like it's cold. All right, there's half my face. 
And it is, it is settling in. It is sort of melting down. We'll see, we'll see. Not a bad, not a bad start. It's a little bit more rubbing of my face than I like to do as far as like doing things that could cause wrinkles or anything like that. But uh, it is clinging to the dry skin I have on my nose. Not an unexpected result there, but we'll see how how well that settles down. But yeah, definitely medium coverage right away. I can barely see the darker of my sunspots poking through there. I think I'm going to have to go fingertips for the other side because it's such a hard, like very little product comes up until it like starts melting. I'm going to try to be a little more distributive. I don't think that's a word. I'm making things up. I'm trying to distribute it better to maybe make it melt down quicker. But like you can totally see how, how you get coverage right away, which is nice. If you want coverage. My fear is that something that goes on this heavy of coverage in one pass can sometimes look like a mask and it can be hard to shear it out on the, you know, perimeter of your face. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But I, I have to rub quite a bit till I get it, get it to spread and melt down. So like, just in general application, this is more work than I like to put in. Just compared to products that don't make me work so hard. You know, even if this was a quick out the door kind of makeup look, I'm gonna spend a whole lot of time fussing with it to get it to melt down and blend in, you know? So for that, I might not like that. But, it's less than $2. <laughs> so, there are some upsides here. Let's see, okay. I'm trying to make sure I got, since it is pretty good coverage, you gotta make sure you don't miss any spots cause they're gonna look obvious. Now, um, the tree pollen's going crazy right now, so I am definitely going to be blowing my nose in a bit, because trees. So, we'll see how this holds up to that, or if it ends up being, uh, well, we'll just see. We'll just see. All right, we're going we're gonna to say that's, that's our application. Let me zoom you guys in, and you can take a look at what I'm looking at. It's not bad. On my cheeks, it actually looks quite nice in terms of both blurring pores and texture. It's clinging a bit to dry skin. So I do have some flaking skin on my nose and my upper lip and between my eyebrows. And it's clinging to all of that. It's not really smoothly covering my chin. Like, it's kind of patchy. And that that's kind of happening in a couple spots. My right hand side of my face, it's a little bit patchy as well. The way it kind of set down, maybe it's because I had less product, a little bit less product, I don't know. Forehead doesn't look too bad. I do see it clinging to a few spots of dry skin, but generally speaking, I think the overall first impression look is that it's nicely blurring, it's nicely smoothing, good amount of coverage. It doesn't feel heavy, so like that, when I said it applies looking heavy, it's like that thicker one coat kind of a layer, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. It feels very lightweight, and as it's drying down, it actually has a, a sort of nice matte finish to it. It doesn't feel sticky or anything like that, which some balms do feel sticky. This one does not. So that is good. Let's check the time. It is 12.54. Let's call it one o'clock. Let me go put the rest of my face on. I will be right back. All right, back with the AOA Studio Air Cream Foundation. I think at a conversational distance, you can't really see where it is clinging to my dry skin. Up close, I can, but I was able to blend everything just fine on top of it, and that has kind of disguised a little bit, except for my nose, of that clinging to the edges of dry skin. So I don't think we're in a bad place starting out. On the rest of my face, I did not set this with powder. I am wearing the Balm Desert Bronzer, 
wet and wild pearlescent pink every so often I just gotta I get in the mood to go like go all retro throwback it's one of the best blushes ever and of course wet and, not wet and wild what's up beauty Serengeti highlighter it benefits the cheetahs and the Serengeti on my eyes well I'm wearing my dragon heart t-shirt design this is one of my own designs I have it over on my Etsy so of course I'm gonna wear my what's up beauty dragon eye eyeshadow palette or I'm just making excuses to wear this because I love it so much. It might be my favorite eyeshadow palette of my life. <laughs> like, like, I mean, come on. This is like the signature look out of it for me. Like it's perfect for me. <sighs> I love this palette so much. Uh, anyway, I'm wearing two of the new Color Street eyeliners, Noir in my waterline, Amethyst on my lash line. My mascara is What's Up Beauty. Why do I always forget the name of it? Watch me. I know it starts with a W and that's all I can remember. On my lips, I've got the Lawless Forget the Filler Balm in Cupid and topped with the Forget the Filler Gloss in, I looked it up, I'm trying to remember, <gasps> Lavender Sorbet. Ooh, I was gonna have to grab Sherlock again, but no, I remembered, I remembered. Is that all the things? Is that everything? I think that's, oh, Jones Road is my eyebrow. Now that my bangs cover my eyebrows, I forget to mention my brows, but it's almost always the Jones Road brow gel. This one's the clear one. Sometimes I use the dark one, but now that they're covered, I usually just do the clear one so I don't make mistakes and get the brown all over my face because you know me, clumsy, 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 clumsy. So let's see. I don't know if I'm gonna get a sandwich today. Yeah, I probably will. So I need to go to Ulta because I ordered another shade of the MAC Studio Radiance. Remember the big like, oh my goodness, shocker, they changed their shades, which still disappoints me so greatly. I can't even get over it because one of the things MAC was so well known for was like you knew your shade in MAC and you could use that to compare to other foundations. You could use that to buy any MAC foundation and know what shade you were like. It was so reliable and then when they threw this curveball and I double checked their website still says that based on my shade in their other foundations I'm still supposed to be NW15 I'm not it's way too dark on me but what did I do then I ordered another one I don't know what I was thinking I screwed up I whatever I wanted to get a lighter shade and I didn't and so I'm gonna try and take this to my local Ulta even though I ordered it online they say I can return it in store and get a lighter shade so I will report back on what lighter shade I end up with assuming they let me exchange it in store so I have to do that and then I'm also going to I tied up a whole lot of tie dye yesterday that has been soaking that I need to untie and rinse. I'm going to be adding tie-dye to my website. So I don't know if I'm gonna put it on Etsy because Etsy currently is all my print-on-demand shirts and my Shopify, my privately run website has my skincare and my, it also has my print-on-demand t-shirts. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. It's gonna go somewhere, but I made 18 tie-dye shirts yesterday. So I need to rinse those out. And uh, I actually have to make some soap and I have to make some, hopefully this weekend I will restock. I wanna restock the cleansing balm and the squalane facial oil because I'm almost out of mine. So I need to make more. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if I'm gonna get all that done today, but that's on the agenda. I'll show you some of it if I end up getting these things done. And uh, regardless, I will give you a daylight check-in in a little bit. And I'll come back tonight, give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, we're almost four hours in on this one. And I feel like it's quite a bit more of a dewy finish than a matte finish. It's described as matte, but seems pretty dewy to me. Here's where we're at. I've blown my nose one time at this point. Here's your full sun look. Let me take a step into some more shade. It is a bit dark, but I knew that going in. It's actually not as dark as I thought it was going to be. So that is something. I'd say it's still holding up, which is good because it's only been a few hours. What, almost four hours, almost three hours. What time is it? 
It's almost four, so it's almost three hours. So it better still be old enough. <laughs> I did go to Ulta. I exchanged that Max Serum Foundation for NW13, which that is swatched on the back of my hand here and blended in. So I think at least in that particular foundation, that's my shade. I will do a side by side and post it over on my Instagram. All right, there we are. A couple hours in, three, few hours in. To me, a couple is two, a few is three or more. <laughs> All right, there you have it. I'll be back tonight. 11.45 p.m. Yes, I changed my shirt and I changed my nails. I promise you it's the same day. <laughs> you wanna see, you wanna see? Can you, can you tell the date on there? <laughs> Let's take a look at how the AOA Studio Air Cream Foundation held up. You know, at the 11 hour mark, it's doing okay. I'm still processing the fact that this is a dollar 88. So here's what's going on. Tiniest bit feeling like I'm starting to get dehydrated in my, my skin. Not bad. If you have dry skin, I think it is still completely fine, tolerable, just maybe a smidge not keeping up with the hydration, but it'll be more humid when it comes to be summertime. So, you know, that could also be just enough to put it over that edge, but otherwise it's holding up pretty well, even as concealer. Let's zoom in so you guys can see what's happening. It has broken down a little bit on my chin, but and of course, I did blow my nose multiple times today, so there's coverage missing there, and that is from that. You know, when I applied it, it was clinging to some dry, flaky skin, but not terribly bad. And I would say that got a little bit better as the product warmed up to my body temp and didn't get worse. It doesn't really settle into lines. It didn't really move around. I think it has diminished a bit in the sense that blush bronzer highlight are a little bit faded from where they started out, but that's kind of a graceful degradation. It's not really doing anything strange or glopping up or anything like that. It's, it's not looking too bad. It looks like an older face of makeup, like I've had it on for a long time, uh, but really not too bad. So if I had to give a grade to the AOA Studio Air Cream Foundation, I was originally gonna go B plus because I was thinking, you know, it's kind of a pain to apply it because it, it's not as creamy. But after it wore for a good 11 hours and I wouldn't be embarrassed to be seen right now, I'm gonna give it the A minus. We are gonna go A minus on a $1.88 foundation. Price is not part of the equation as far as determining a grade. It's basically how does it perform on dry and maturing skin. But I think it does pretty well. I think it's okay for dry skin. Not, you know, heavenly glorious the best thing ever for dry skin. But it's, it's pretty good. And uh, I don't really see any major concerns for maturing skin. It did really well with pores and textures. So uh, not settling into lines. Ziva, stop scratching my chair. Oh, that's her new thing. She scratches the chair. Instead of just jumping up, she uses it as her scratching post. This is a, like a vinyl, vinyl, I don't know, fake leather chair. She's ruining my chair. It's my favorite chair. They don't sell it anymore. Oh, this is life with cats. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go A minus. A minus on the air cream foundation. I like it. Um, I'm, I'm, but I'm surprised. I'm pretty surprised. I do have okay luck with AOA Studio, but I mean, foundation's tough. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go A minus. There you have it. Another episode of Foundation Fest is in the books. If you like foundation reviews, if you had fun with this one, give me a thumbs up down below. Go see me over on Patreon. I post some behind the scenes stuff and sales and any other makeup news I find goes up on the Patreon. You can catch me on all the socials, Instagram, TikTok, if it still exists by the time you see this, who knows? <laughs> and on Facebook. 
As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.